YouTube as it go in the goat house is back after Sunday's action in week four here with the recap video five biggest winners of the week then we'll have takeaways for the rest of the winners five biggest losers takeaways for the rest of the losers we do this video every single Monday we have loads of weekly content and even we're always adding more listen in the bottom left there check us out like subscribe to notifications on very important to follow us on Twitter Link pinned in the comments for that. Other social medias and our sponsors, GLD Shop, Liquid IV, Code Go on both those sites. We have a giveaway for the GLD Shop. Uh, links in the comments for that. Rocking the Giants chain from the GLD Shop. One of my favorites, by the way, too. Bigger than the other ones with the Notre Dame shirt. I guess a little Julian Love love there. Uh, and the Giants do play tonight. Seahawks Giants excited for that. We'll be talking live on Twitter during that as well. Uh, but the first biggest winner, again, I got five big winners every week. And we'll talk about every single team, though. Do not worry. Uh, starting with Thursday's game, the Detroit Lions, back-to-back uh, -back weeks on my biggest winners list. I mean, there is one negative for the Lions, I guess, is that they kind of allowed a comeback there, and uh, they shouldn't let that happen. But overall, I mean, pure dominance. And they, what, what, they show, what they've shown and what they show in a game like that in Lambeau Thursday night, NFC North battle, what they've shown is they are the clear favorite right now in the NFC North. Uh, you know, Who's going to stop them in the NFC North? It doesn't really feel like anybody right now. Not not really close either. So that's great. But it's good to see them going out and just being dominant. Like they, they, you know, I love the play speed. They play so fast. Like both sides of the ball. Everyone flying to the ball. It's just like sometimes when you watch them play, it's like you, you don't even know what's hitting you. Like you don't know what's happening. It all happens so fast. That's kind of what I see when I watch lines, especially in this game on Thursday night. Uh, it feels like they win in multiple ways. I think we mentioned that last week too. I mean, they can win with the run. They can win with the pass. They can make plays on defense now. It's not the same old defense that we're used to. I, I mean, teams can still throw on them, I believe, but they can make plays on defense. They can stop the run. They can get after the quarterback in unique ways. Um, and I'm definitely impressed with their run defense, like how far along it is, like how much it has improved. Like, it's very impressive. Ali McNeil was a stud in this game. Hutchinson was a stud. Obviously, he's been a stud. Um, but how much they are improved stopping the run, and it's not just this game. They've kind of showed it through multiple games. So the Lions are, uh, are you know, I feel like a legit playoff team, the legit team of the NFC North. So it's good to see them kind of go out there and display some dominance uh, in, in a big, we know they're better than the Packers, but it's in Green Bay, Thursday night football, still some questions as we are in week four, and then boom, they go and display some dominance. Uh, pretty good to see there. Pretty good to see. Uh, the Bills are next. I mean, they go in the, the game of the week against the Miami Dolphins, the red hot Miami Dolphins, uh, and they put up 48 points. They went 48 to 20. Um, so that's obviously massive, you know, for them and maybe kind of take over as the favorite in the AFC. I think the Dolphins were, you know, whether you're pretty, you know, forget like predicting, you know, whatever you're predicting at the end of the year, like who was the favorite at that time? I think it was the Dolphins and the Bills, uh, on the streak that they're on displaying dominance and, you know, dethroning the Dolphins and maybe some of those other AFC teams, maybe not looking as good as we thought they would. So it feels like right now the Bills are kind of the team to beat. We'll call it that in the AFC. They they put themselves in that driver's seat, uh, which I think is a good spot to be in, obviously, uh, you know, with a dominant win like this. Uh, explosive offense outing. Could be a little bit more to the run game, I suppose. But, I mean, it's just, just Josh, what Josh Allen's able to do, throwing the ball down the field. Diggs had a huge game. Gabe Davis uh, throwing the ball downfield. But, you know, the different parts of the field, he can hit throws and they can make plays after the catch, all of the above. And then what Josh Allen can do with his, with his legs. It's nothing really new, but it's good to see against a pretty damn good team in the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I thought the defense stepped up in the second half. First half, it's like, all right, whoever has the ball last, is going to win this game. You know, and that, that was kind of the take. Like, the Bills offense looks so good, so explosive. But what about this defense, though? But I, I thought it, they, they, the adjustments they made and, and – they made thing. They made two, and you know, look, you know, not like the two of them the last three weeks in the second half. And uh, I was surprised how like they were able to limit different, like you know, a Cham was still a problem, but they're able to like to at least limit some big threats. Uh, you know, quarterback play, some some receiver play from the Dolphins' offense. So I, I love that. And they can still make plays on defense. They can create a turnover. They get a turnover. But they got playmakers everywhere. A quarterback. Uh, receivers, running back, defensive line, linebackers make plays. Uh, the defensive backs, we got the safeties. I mean, Porter was out in this game. Micah Hyde made a big play. So 
Um, yeah, just playmakers everywhere. Looked like one of the teams to beat, one of the best teams in football. That was huge for the Buffalo Bills. The third winner has got to be the Houston Texans, who were on here last week as well. They win 30-6. to 30-6 to as a young, improving team against a veteran team in the Steelers. Well, the Steelers got some young guys, but the Texans are missing pretty much their whole offensive line. They're going against one of the best pass rushes in football. Uh, you know, and, and, and so they're not supposed to win that game. They're not supposed to win that game for that reason only. And they go out there and they, they went 30 to six. They go out there and dominate. It wasn't even close. Like how the Steelers and the Texans matched up. Like the Texans just show that they're a much, much better team head to head at least. But I like the two game winning streak they're on. I say it all the time. Like weeks one, two, and sometimes three don't mean a whole lot. Week four, like as you go on, it means more and more. You can have more takeaways. So for them to be, you know, not look so great in week one and two, but then be so dominant in week three and four against teams they were not supposed to beat. It is a very good sign, not only for the future, but right now as well. And I do like their schedule. So some promising things for the Texans here. I love this coaching staff. I was very high on the hirings that they made uh, as it was. So it's not really super surprising, but I am very, very impressed. Uh, they have this team prepared. They have backups prepared. The game plan is beautiful. I mean, it's perfect. Uh, any adjustments they need to make, they're right there. I mean, D'Amico Ryans can call a defense. He can, you know, put opposing offenses in tough situations, you know, unpredictable situations from the defense. Uh, and the offense, you got to give a lot of credit to Slowick and company there, what they've done, uh, making Stroud's job easier, but getting the most out of him, not limiting him, uh, you know, being able to scheme things up, but allowing their quarterback to go to work when he needs to, being able to win with the pass and the run, it is beautiful thing to see so again at the bottom then they can win in multiple ways I love those teams that can showing me that they can win in multiple ways that's like a big thing for me because if the run game's not on Stroud and company can win with the pass I mean Nico Collins has been ridiculous too by the way um but if the run game's not on they can win with the pass the pass game maybe if they have their hiccups not on they, they possibly can run well on teams Damian Pierce Devin Singletary uh, you know and then defensively they can get after the quarterback they can make plays to you know in the air there are they were God awful stop and run last year. They're definitely better this year. Uh, and I, pass rush is winning. I think it's it's been winning. It's been getting after the quarterback. They just haven't really been getting the sacks. They haven't been able to finish. But I think that they were able to finish a bit more in this game. I like that. They have a variety of guys that can get after the quarterback. You know, there's a variety of guys that are winning. You know, it's not just Jonathan Grenard or Will Anderson, which I think the sacks are coming for Will Anderson. But guys like Jerry Hughes can get on the board there as well. So I love that. Um, so I think the pass rush is only getting but this team is only getting better and it's dominating right now so it's a great great sign CJ Stroud has just been just incredible I, I mean I don't know if you could ask for a better start it's it's pretty it's pretty cool sight um, you know so the Texans watch out for those Texans uh, the fourth biggest winner gotta go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and they were kind of winners on the season so far and there's still some questions though like after the first couple weeks they went in week one they kind of got outplayed, but they won in clutch ways. So you still kind of question, was that just a week one thing? Um, you know, week two, they pulled off again. But then you do question a little bit because they played the Bears, who were probably the worst team in football. And then week three, even though we pointed out there were some good things, even though there couldn't have been a lot of good things, they got dominated by the Eagles in primetime football. So you're like, you start to go, you don't you know, say, say it firmly, but you start to go, is that more of the Bucks, or is the first two weeks more of the Bucks? But they go out here uh, in week four. In New Orleans and absolutely dominate, like a must win. Well, not really a must win game, but a game that if you take away, that is huge. That is huge in the division. And they do that, and they do it in pretty pretty close to dominating fashion, 26 to 9. Uh, defense was locked down, and they made plays. They create turnovers. Love that. Uh, I, I think a big thing here is Todd Bowles. Like, there was a lot of doubt with him because of his past with the Jets, but because of last year, too. There was a lot of questions with the coaching. Um, like even at times, like is his defense even, cause he's known as a good defense. Like at least he should be a good defensive coach. The defense should be good. But there was times last year it was like, man, this doesn't even feel like a top bowls defense. And they did have injuries, but, um, and does he have control of this team? But I, I think he's and it's rare to see coaches improve. It's like actually pretty, you think about it. Like when do you see coaches like really, you can see coaches tweak this and kind of get better a little bit, but drastically improve. And I think we're seeing that right now. So that's great. That's great to see. I, I think he has his team well prepared. He has a good game plan out there. He has the defense balling, and you know that's his background. And then Baker. Baker can make mistakes here and there. He's not the greatest quarterback in the world. But what I look for court when I look at quarterbacks, what I look for is can you find ways? Can you find ways to create plays, make plays, be better if things are down, elevate your playmakers, 
And I, you know, again, Baker's not the greatest quarterback in the world, and he could make mistakes, but I see that from Baker. I see, like, he finds ways to make plays. Like, it's not just his legs, it's what his arm is, arm as well. Like, he's a clutch player. So give Baker a lot of credit. That signing looks amazing right now. And Baker, like, still has that potential in there. You can see that. So that's why I look for, for quarterbacks. Like, can they find ways? And, and there's quarterbacks that just can't. They got a million chances. They can't do it. Baker's a guy that he's not the greatest, but he finds ways. He finds ways to make plays. I love that. Uh, again, we talk about a huge division win. Like in New Orleans, they really weren't supposed to win, uh, and they go out there and dominate. So does that put them with the Falcons struggles, the Saints struggles, the Panthers are awful, uh, they just beat the Saints. The Bucks might be in the driver's seat. They're the team to beat in the NFC South, so that's great too for them. Uh, and the last big winner, and again, we'll talk about every single team, uh, the Tennessee Titans. I mean, they go out there and dominate the Cincinnati Bengals, and you thought, all right, the Bengals struggled in the first two weeks. They looked pretty bad, but this is what the Bengals do. Second half of that Rams game, which the Rams are playing, playing, playing pretty good football, they dominate the Rams. They look like the old Bengals. So like, all right, here comes the Bengals. They always beat the Titans on top of it. The Titans got no shot in this game. Wrong. They go out there and dominate them 27-3. Titans, we always say, they're always tough. Mike, 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 Mike Vrabel always has them playing tough. They're always a tough. Like, even if they're not the best team in the world, they give you a battle. They use, I mean, the, Not so much the Browns last week for some reason, but they usually give you a battle. So they're a tough team, but they're even tougher at home. They look like they're a problem for teams in Tennessee. Um, so that they're, that's a team to watch, you know, when they're playing at home, like it's, it's something, uh, run game still dangerous. Like, but I'm sitting here saying like, is it actually more dangerous? Like Derrick Henry, I mean, the guy doesn't decline first off that touchdown run was just a vintage Derrick Henry run. It's insane. So he still got it one, but you do wonder like, can Derrick Henry run the ball like 50 times exaggerating, but a game like he normally did and still do that. I wouldn't put it past him. But they got Ty J Spears now, who is athletic weapon as a runner, but catching the ball, and it opens up more opportunities, more possibilities. Um, teams have to wonder, like, okay, this guy's on the field now. It's not Derrick Henry. Like, w- what's going on here? Before it was like, man, they were so predictable in the past. It's like, all right, Derrick Henry's not in the field. Wonder what they're doing, and I haven't really loved like the guys they got in his backup, except for the year they had De- Deontay Foreman. I loved he was fantastic for the Titans, um, but now they got this unique weapon at, in the backfield that can also catch the ball, and he has game changing speed. It's like what's like the t- defense got to be like they be worried about that, but they you know got to be worried to pass when he's on the field as well. So it. it it's it's a dangerous running game. Like it's it's like st- I want to say it's still the Titan run game, but it's like different in a way. So I love that. Love that about them. Team defense. I mean the defense plays together. They swarm to the football. They make plays. They collapse pockets. They get pressure. The interior is fantastic. We know they stopped the run. Actually, Mixon was getting going earlier in this one, which is a little surprising. Maybe it was just unexpected from the Titans defense. They're expecting pass, 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 pass. Uh, not worried about it. Uh, you know, they, they the Vrabel has these guys ready. They play great team defense. It's a tough team. It's a tough team. Uh, are they just really bad away though? Like, what, what situation there? They do have turnover, but like when they turn over the ball, they're really bad. When they don't, they're they're really good. There was times in this game where it like I can feel like dominance actually, which is weird saying that with the Titans, but it's like, man, the way they're running on them, the way they're just killing them, swarming to the ball, swarming to Burrow. It's like you almost felt like a little bit of dominance, and like you really only feel that from great teams. So um, it was an interesting one for the Tennessee Titans, twenty-seven to three, big time victory. Let's talk about the other winners and some positive takeaways that I have. Uh, the Cowboys are a big winner as well. They're very close to being in the top five biggest. I try to limit that to five, make it unique. Um, but they're right there. I mean, elite defensive performance last week was not without digs, but they figured it out this week. Deron Bland stepped up big time at a big time game. They're getting after the quarterback. They're making Mac Jones's life a living hell. Uh, but they also win with off. They also won with offense. They can make plays on offense through the path, through the air on the ground. That's what I like about the Cowboys still. Like the defense is incredible. Uh, but the offense is, can make plays in multiple ways, too. Uh, the 49ers just keep showing that they're the best team in football. They're remaining at the top, at least the NFC, but I think right now the best in football. Um, and it's in, in the NFL where everybody's good, everybody's talented, like even the worst teams, like they're, they're going to put up somewhat of a fight. 
Um, you know, they're going to come up with something unique to try to throw you off. Like, it is hard to stay consistent. It is hard to win game after game. But not only that, but look the best game after game. So it's very impressive the Niners are able to do that. And the Cardinals are a sneaky team as well. Purdy and Ayuk, not only is it a really good connection, like I love that connection, but boy, oh boy, are these two players, and more than two players, but these two players, the improvements pretty much game by game are astonishing, really. Like how, how much Purdy is improving, even post-injury, um, the, the timing of throws, I love. The timing of throws, but he's getting more accurate. Uh, he only had one incompletion, if I'm not mistaken, in this game. Uh, but I love the timing uh, of his game, like... Knowing when the ball needs to come out, you know, what part of the route it needs to come out, uh, knowing when pressure could hit, knowing when, all right, I can hold the ball longer on this one, I can scramble a little bit, throw on the run. On this one, I got to drop back and sling it. I love that part of his game. Like, it's it's actually insanely good. Uh, and Ayuk is just the way he plucks the balls, um, you know, through the air, uh, just big playability, the way he gets separation going across the field, uh, downfield, how he is after the catch, the speed. Uh, he, he's a, he's been much improved as well. He's already been a good player, but he's been much improved. Uh, the Jags kind of look like the Jags. Like that was like the last couple weeks are like weird. Like even the Chiefs game was like they lost, but like the defense played well, but where the hell was the offense? It was like kind of weird. It wasn't really like the Jags. And then last week they got obliterated by the Texans. Like, all right, that they look awful. That's not supposed to, that's not what the Jags are supposed to be about. This week, uh, the London game, it looked more like the Jags. Um, you know, they, they kind of put this game away pretty early. Defense made plays. The offense did enough. I thought Trevor Lawrence was fantastic throwing and running the ball. Uh, the defense again, created turnovers. So I love that about them, um, as well. Uh, I think they get a one. I think they're capable of a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit more efficiency in the run game. Uh, but overall it's a big time win for the, for the Jags. Ravens look dominant, like a dominant, dominant win. Um, how high up do you put that like for a dominant win? Because yeah, the Browns were missing Deshaun Watson, but the Ravens, uh, you know, still went out and dominated this game. I think the pass rush came alive in this game because you do wonder about the Ravens' pass rush. Um, you know, on paper at least, I thought it was very good. Mark Andrews was was sensational in this game as well. Uh, Rams very explosive. We kind of been saying that, but I mean they can they can break an explosive play like through the air on the ground at any given time. I mean they can they can. Take the top off, you know they they could uh they could hit a big game winner at any given time. We actually saw it in this game too, but throughout the game. And then back to Kyron, I said that this is kind of a was a t- good take for me. I thought going into this week, uh, you know, because last week they would get in the red zone, even near the goal line or somewhat near the goal line, and they would try to throw and they would get sacked and they would be kind of like put themselves in impossible like obvious passing situations. Uh, and then end up kicking a field goal where Kyron Williams, who the first two games, like, because last week was week three, obviously, uh, was just a do- was just dominant in, in the red zone and getting in the end zone. And last week, I was just a little confused. So I thought they were going to go back to that a little bit more, and they did that. And Kyron Williams got them, and they, so they got the seven instead of the three for the most part. They did miss a couple kicks, though, so you wish you turned those into seven or something, so, more than zero points. Uh, but overall, I think the beginning of this game, they, they did it right. I don't like that they allowed the comeback, like – you didn't punt until like the fourth quarter, but why Why is this game going to overtime? So there is a negative in there as well, but I do like how explosive they are. Um, the other winners, Chargers are very clutch back-to-back weeks. I mean, they get seven sacks. It's a big win uh, any day, any time you get seven sacks. Khalil Mack was insane, uh, like vintage Khalil Mack. Um, so they're super clutch. They won back-to-back games. This is a game they should put away. I know they are missing a bunch of big-time players, but Raiders out there with Aiden O'Connell, He's getting sacked like crazy. He's fumbling like crazy. You have a good lead. Like I don't like that they have to rely on clutch situations to pull out games. It's kind of the same thing two weeks in a row. But they're winning and they are clutch. Eagles, you know, use the word clutch again. Clutch in crucial moments. Like when the offense absolutely has to make a play, they make a play. That's what it feels like with the Philadelphia Eagles. Like absolutely, like got to make a play. Got to go down the field. Got to drain clock. Got to score. Got to convert this third or convert this fourth down. It feels like they do it, you know, so that's awesome. Defense is questionable. It's been a little questionable. Uh, last week was fine. Um, but I'm not worried about the D-line at all. I mean, D-line, like one-on-one reps, they're winning, which is just off raw talent. Like, that's not really coaching uh, the defensive line. Like, they're just super talented. They go and win their reps. So, you know, they are, they're getting sacks. They're, they're playing well there. Uh, I think coverages, you know, what call, what coverages they're calling and how the secondary is playing, I think a lot of that goes on coaching, and they are missing Jonathan Gannon when it comes to that quite a bit. Um, you know, they started off pretty bad. They kind of finished the game bad, though, too, on defense. Like, 
can't give up that touchdown at the end, but offense is just still super explosive and can win multiple ways and can make those big plays in crucial moments. Uh, the Vikings got to win. The pass rush, because of the blitz, well, not just because of the blitz, but it was fantastic. Harrison Smith had an insane game, three sacks, strip sack, game-winning sack, insane game. So defense actually played pretty well. Uh, you know, They got after the quarterback. That blitz is a problem for some teams at least. Uh, they got Marcus Davenport, their, one of their big free agency signings back this week, and he actually had a really good game. Uh, I thought in the run game and the pass game, DJ Wanham was solid as well. Uh, but I thought Harrison Smith and actually Marcus Davenport were kind of the highlights uh, of that defense, even though Wanham did score. Uh, they still got those mistakes on offense. I mean, Justin Jefferson was fantastic. The run, they got the run game going as a positive. They got the run game going. Cam Akers was very good in his limited carries. Uh, Madison got less snaps, but got actually his best game. Uh, but the you know bad mistakes by Kirk. That first pick six was brutal, like brutal one. So um, still, there's still mistakes out there, even though they can be explosive. Uh, Broncos very impressive comeback. I, you know, I was impressed with McLaughlin. Really was got going off. That was impressive. Uh, but Russ was pretty efficient, got the job done when he needed to. So offense did a solid job in that comeback. The defense still looks like the worst defense in football, though. It's brutal. Like against the Bears, too. Like it is a I don't I can't believe the defense is that bad. I knew it wasn't going to be as good as like how people were talking it was. Uh, but man, it's bad. So there's still a little bit of negative in there. And the Chiefs barely escaped the Jets, even though the start looked like it was going to be a blowout win. Uh, they barely escaped the Jets. Mahomes did not have a good game through the air. Kelsey's winded. Uh, I guess, you know, once he gets in shape, they're going to be better. Uh, but it's a little weird that he's not. I guess he had an injury in week one. Uh, defense was starting to let up. They started really good. But, I mean, against Zach Wilson, offense, it looks like, that's, you know, before this week, it was like the Chiefs defense is better than it's ever been. They're so tight in coverage, but it was not the case in this game. Like, they were allowing a lot on the ground and early separation. They made Zach Wilson look like a pretty decent quarterback. Uh, but Pacheco was a monster in this game. They probably should run more because how good he was. And Mahomes is so dangerous with his legs. Like, we talk about who's the best running quarterback in football. You bring up Lamar Jackson, whatever, whatever. And, yeah, I understand that. But I I think Mahomes needs to be in that category because, you know, I, I mean, he's a pass-first guy. But when he runs, it changes the game. Like, it, it is – and it's been like that, too. It's like – Honestly, he should go more. You just, I guess you worry about that field they play on, but him getting an injury again. Uh, but he was running like that in the Super Bowl with the injury. But, like, it, it, like they should actually – he should scramble more. He had the uh, first interception, which was really bad. He had a wide open lane to run, too. Like, he, he can run for 100-plus. Like, he can do it Like, like it, it, if they decided to. it's He's super dangerous with his legs, and it kind of won this game, even though he had a bad game through the air. Uh, on to uh, the biggest losers. The Bengals got to be the biggest losers. Joe, Joe Burrow ain't right. He's just not right because we know the talent's there. He's not right. Um, he's There's pressure in his face. Uh, you remember, I guess you think now we think about it, like you drive with your legs, like you throw the ball a lot with your base. And that's what we talk about. Like some quarterbacks are inaccurate or they're not right because they're, they're base, because they're mechanics. Um, so that kind of makes you think like why they are – dinking and dunking why they can't get the ball downfield one he doesn't have a whole, whole lot of time but two yeah he's not 100 percent right so you could see that and it limits their entire offense it limits zach taylor it limits his playbook it limits joe burrow it limits the receivers it limits everything it limits everything uh they they the way they started like i was surprised like they got a few goals out of a touchdown so i guess that was a loss but they the way they worked the field on the first drive, it's like, all right, they're going to dominate this game. So it's a little weird that went away. Uh, but that's just that's the takeaway. They are super limited. Like, it's insane. Like, how like the whole offense is just limited because of Joe Burrow's injury and because the offense line isn't the greatest. The run D didn't seem right. It didn't seem right going into the Rams game. Then it got much better. But um, it's usually a very, 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 very good run defense. And it just what I know they played the Titans run game, which is one of the better ones, but it just was not good uh, in this game. So it, it's a little a little concerning. Uh, Steelers Pickett's just been struggling. It's a stale offense, and people blame the play calling and the play designs. And sure, I, I don't think they're good. I think they're bad. They're stale. But the way Pickett's playing, and he kind of is being a small ball guy, and he's taking sacks, and he's not too accurate. He's throwing the wrong team. It kind of 
plays a part in the plays and how the offense is stale. So you cannot put it all on the offensive coordinator. Um, so that's a problem. And Pickett got injured on top of it, but he's been extremely disappointing. Like you still, you still say like, sure, Pickett can get better, but these days it doesn't take long to figure out if a quarterback's gonna be good or not. You know, so you still wonder to do the Steelers need a quarterback? Uh, and then with the Texans missing all that offensive line, then the pass rush would get after uh, C.J. Stroud a little bit more. Uh, and they just could not do that. They kind of rely on that. Steelers are two and two. They feel like they're worse than two and two. They rely on pass rush getting home, and that's pretty much it. Um, you know, so it's not good. It's not good. Just getting dominated by the Texans, who are a beat up team, not good. Uh, and your quarterback's injured now. It's Trubisky time. So I mean, it could it be a much worse? I don't know because Pickett's been playing bad. Patriots. Uh, yeah. It's, now it's now it's time to say it's. An, I, I've seen enough where. I know Mac Jones looked pretty good in, in the first year, and sure, he can get a little bit better, but everyone's searching for that franchise quarterback that can win him a Super Bowl. Mac Jones continues to make sta- mistakes and stakes, um, and just, just silly mistakes, too, and throwing the ball to the wrong team. And You can blame the receivers all you want, but the receivers aren't throwing the ball to the wrong team. Um, good quarterbacks find ways to look good. Good quarter- I keep saying this, or people that try to make excuses. Good quarterbacks tend to look like good quarterbacks. Like, good quarterbacks play like good quarterbacks. Not-so-good quarterbacks tend to look not-so-good. It's it's not rocket science. It's pretty simple. So he is not good right now. Um, and he's worse than expected. But I mean, the Patriots are worse than expected. I, I knew they had a tough schedule, and I knew they could they can, they can have a bad record, but I thought they could be a team that looked better than their actual record. Uh, they do not. They look like their record right now. They do not look like a, look like a good team, and they're getting beat up on defense on top of it. Saints, like the Saints look like a good team throughout this year, you know, here and there, um, you know, really through two weeks plus three quarters of the third week, uh, you know, but it's mainly because their defense and now, now it's all adding up though. Like now it's like, all right, you got four games without, and you get explosive plays from the offense here and there. They look kind of pretty throughout the four weeks, but now it's like, we're four games without like consistent offense. It's a problem. Derek Carr was playing hurt, I guess, but He's not looking good. He's holding the ball too long. He doesn't have enough drive, you know, with, with the ball like downfield. Um, he had Olave wide open for a touchdown, and the ball was actually on target, but he put way too much air, like insane amount of air under it. Like it was a punt. Like he they had to wait for it to come down forever. Like I, I don't, like he can't drive the ball. Like that's a problem. And I guess he's playing hurt, but he shouldn't have played then. Winston comes in, throws the pick right away. Uh, just relying, I think specifically relying on their secondary, but you can throw in Demario Davis. You know, they're relying on those guys uh, to just win the game and make plays. It's kind of a problem. So Saints were, like, kind of building up. Like, this defense is serious. They can win games with just the defense. I think the offense will figure it out. Now it's like, okay, the offense is not figuring out. They're relying on a specific part of their defense. We're really coming down here on the Saints. Uh, the Dolphins uh, look like the old Dolphins, which were, like, you know, looking at, like, last year, like the Tua-era Dolphins, which – are like pretty good at times, like explosive at times, but like, are they like really that great? And like the first three weeks, they look great, but hit, like every single year of the NFL, it's like the first three weeks, you cannot really have major takeaways from. Like, it doesn't really tell you a f- the future of the year. And then they go, I know they play, they play a really good team, but they kind of look like the old Dolphins were like, two is still good, you know, but there was some bad decisions on there. The offensive line didn't look that good. Um, a-chan looked fantastic. The defense looks awful. Like, how could the defense be this bad? Like, it's really, it's a problem. So it's like, all right, I still think the Dolphins are a good team. We don't want to base too much off one game. But it's like, all right, is this more like the Dolphins? Like, is like, and people are going to say no, like the first three weeks. Like, it's kind of what you want to believe. We're not going to make a statement here that it's more this than that or that than this. But it's, you know, they're not going to be that great, elite, insane, like 70-point the uh, or even close to that every single week like so this might be more like it for some weeks you know so that a l- little bit of an issue there uh as more and more of the game plan comes out uh and they just got obliterated they should not get a, they should not get beat that bad they should not get beat that bad um you know no Jordan Poyer out there either for for the Bills so um that that was disappointing but still obviously I think they're a good team it's just one game but you know you start to you want wonder if uh you know, is this like, I don't think they're this bad, but is this, are they closer to this? Or are they closer to that? You start to wonder those things at this time of the year, because you know, not a hundred percent of the time teams lie to us in the first three weeks, but most of the time 
teams show us their real selves in these weeks compared to the top three. That is not me, me making a statement saying the Dolphins, that this is the Dolphins for sure, but not the best look. Not the best look. Kind of, again, look like the old Dolphins. Like, we're, they could be pretty good, pretty explosive, but they're not as great as the first three weeks. Like, you know, so that's tough. Uh, other negatives, the Bears. If you can't win that one, I don't know which ones you're going to win. Uh, Justin Fields played as good as he possibly could play throughout most of this game. Um, you know, I think the difference was, and people were probably going, oh, the coaching changed some things. So the blame's been on the coaching, and they didn't. The difference was Fields was actually seeing and throwing to the open receivers, which they were a little bit more open because the Broncos' defense so bad, and they were getting going. He was playing well, and they let that game slip away. Uh, I, I think the Bears are just all around bad. We know the defense is bad, like run defense, pass rush, Secondary's beat up, so that's going to be bad because of that for the most part. But it wasn't great before either, but it wasn't god-awful. Uh, and then offensively, uh, I think it's pretty stale. Like the coaching, the play call, and the coaching overall is not great when you're losing like this. Uh, but everything about it, like Fields played well early in this game. Uh, but I see people saying, like, I keep seeing yeah, the Bears took the ball out of Fields' hands. I, the Fields took the ball out of his own hands, like quite literally. Like you, you fumble the ball – and it gives them the touchdown to score to tie the game. Um, and yes, the pressure was in his face instantly. That's a loss for the offensive line. They it cannot be in his pressure instantly. But Fields has been like a big negative for him lately. Has been taking sacks. And then instead of one that you should take, you have to take. He actually tries these like backwards. Like he tries to throw it. Um, so that's most definitely on him. Uh, and then you know the the that I keep seeing the coaches take the ball out of his hands but then he th- he intentional grounding and then the next was costly next play interception like he has another shot at a game winning drive which he had tons of last year and he just can't do it so is it all on fields absolutely not like it's just all around bad is the point but um I'm kind of we're kind of getting annoyed with hearing the excuses here so the the bears just need everything it feels like they need everything um but if you can't win that one uh, you're not going to win any really is what it feels like uh, the Panthers just feel all around bad. They made plays. They got a pick six to start. That was cool. They got another interception that was kind of a freebie, you know. So they they made a couple plays there. But I mean, you got those things going for you. And the Vikings actually don't have much offense going because they're making mistakes. And you still can't win. The Vikings have not been able to run on anybody. Both Madison and Acres ran well on them. Um, the, the, they didn't know how to handle the blitz. Bryce Young did not play well. I think Dalton would have been better. Not that you had to play Dalton. You got to play Bryce Young, but that fumble was brutal. People are going to make excuses. They're going to blame other things, but just good quarterbacks tend to play good. But the good thing, he has time to figure it out. He has a lot of time, but, you know, it, it's a, it's, it just feels like they're all around bad. Like, you can't stop the Vikings run game. Like, you know, how do you lose that game? So, I don't know. Uh, Falcons time for a quarterback change. Like the quarterback is holding them back. We kind of said that could be the case going into the year. People want to tell us no, but no, nope, we can see that going into the year. Um, you know, the, the run game got gone. Bijan got gone, but it's just not enough. You know, they just don't have the quarterback play. The passing game is not there because the quarterback, he takes sacks. He throws the ball to the wrong team. That's really what it was for the Falcons here. And it's turning them into a bad team. First two weeks. That's every year. The first two or so weeks, like teams could lie to us, and they they look good, and then they they look really bad the last two weeks. So m- chances are, ch- you, I mean, Falcons fans probably disagree, but chances are, that's just what it says. Is this is probably the Falcons, like not the first two weeks. Um, the Packers very predictable. Like we talked about it weeks ago, stale offense. Like it's very predictable. It's like run the ball. Open up the play action pass. Like you need things to be flowing. You need things specific things to work for the offense to work. It's boring. It's predictable. Um, they don't have enough juice. Like they got good young playmakers, but they just don't have that takeover guy. And I guess Aaron Jones, when he's healthy, could be that guy. They just don't have that like big time guy in offense to take over. There's like nothing unique about this offense. So even though they got good young players that can continue to develop. The offense gets more and more predictable as more and more tape comes out, as every game comes out. They can actually decline. They can actually decline because of that, and we saw that in this game. And they rely on pass rush. Like, their their pass rush, Rashawn Gary's been fantastic. He's pretty much the pass rush, but, I mean, Kenny Clark, two other guys like that. But they need that to be going crazy for them to be in or win games, like it feels like. And going against the Lions offense line, you can't really do that. So I feels like it feels like that's what they rely on. I did like the comeback or there was some impressive things there. And again, my takeaway from that is they got good young decent young players that can continue to get better, but it's just like kind of a stale team right now. And they 
they started so like they looked so bad to start. Like okay, like this Packers team is bad actually. Like. That's what it was like, and you know, so stuff. Uh, Browns DTR really struggling. He's a rookie quarterback throwing that situation. The offensive line looked worse than normal. It kind of shows how like quarterback play plays a part on offensive line play, because the offensive line's not bad with Deshaun Watson in there. Um, and I'm blocking this. It says too much man. I love the defense still. We're not gonna we're not gonna overreact too much. Um, you know, it was man. They're on the field constantly, so you can't really expect them to play too great. Um, it's not like they played super bad. It's not like that, but. They have been maybe the best man coverage defense, um, you know, through three weeks, and then they, they're really good at it. the defense. Has been insane. It's been elite. But then this game against like you know Lamar Jackson, the guy that you know can take off. Especially it's easier for running quarterbacks against man coverage. You know, so are are, are they going to be able to switch that up more? Are they going to be able to thrive in zone coverage? Um, we're not going to make a major takeaway, um, you know, from this game because they're constantly on the field. But it is something like down the stretch where teams start the game plan better um, for every team, every situation. Like, it, it, are, are they going to be as good as they were early in the year? So a little bit of a question. I, I'm not going to – no way panic. I still love the defense. Uh, and then the last five uh, losers of the week and takeaways – yeah, offensive line. The rate I know and it was weird. Like in the off season, people were acting like the offensive line was fine. Like it's fine. They don't really need offensive linemen. And I was like, what? I'm pretty sure like they have one guy that I can trust, and that's it. And in the first two weeks, they were looked pretty good actually. And then they had good pass block win rates. They looked pretty good. And I was like, ah, that might be like the first two weeks lying to us a little bit. And now they've really went downhill, and this is kind of more like it. Just constant pressure. Um, so they, they, yeah, I was surprised they relied on just the same exact offensive line and it's kind of showing right now. Rookie quarterback struggles. I mean, you almost expect it, but O'Connell, it couldn't hang on to the ball and it was a little bit of hype because the preseason looked really good, but uh, there was too much expectations that people were a little too, too riled up about this going into this one that he was starting. People thought he could be better than Jimmy right away in this one. It was a, you know, you know, a little, a little surprising. Um, they had a shot to win, though. Despite all the struggles, they actually had a shot to win. So being in that game, I guess there's a positive. Uh, Commanders' offensive line is kind of where I expect it to be as well. Like, it's not good offensive line. Um, but bad defense. Like, uh, Commanders are supposed to have a good defense. And for you know, they, they should not be an offensive team, but they are. It's like it's almost like, okay, we're an offensive team. Like, the offense is coming along. Like, they're explosive. Like, that's good. But we should not be – you should not be an offensive team. Like, the defense is very bad right now. And that's a problem because they got legendary defensive coaches on their staff, Rivera and Del Rio, and they have good defensive players. Like they have an incredible defensive line. I guess the secondary isn't that strong. And I guess, you know, now that you look at it, the secondary, it's like, eh, and the linebackers are worse than eh. And the defensive line is very, very good though, but it, sh- it really shouldn't be this bad. Um, yeah. Cardinals. It's not really a surprise, but the defense is badly missing talent. It's kind of showing, you know, but I mean, they 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 had production on offense. You know, they put up a fight. You know, I suppose they they have production on offense, but defense. You know, tackling, they're just missing talent. It, you know, um, and the Colts, I feel like are an inconsistent team. They like have flashes, like wow, like one second I'm going, like the Colts are like sneaky, like they might be sneaky decent, like better than expected, and then I'm going like. Yeah, that's kind of the Colts. Like that's they're, 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 they're it's gonna be a rough patch here. Like they're gonna be bad. Uh, and I think it showed in this game. The start was so ugly. And and I, I said it throughout this video. I say it every year. It's an every year thing. Like week four, week five, these things tell us more about teams than first three weeks. It happens every year. It's like likely that's the case. Uh, so throughout the first half of this game, where the Colts look really bad, like the worst team in football, bad. I'm going. All right, that's the Colts. Like I, you know, thought they were going to be kind of have a rough patch here. That's kind of this kind of actually makes it actually worse than I thought, um, as how they were looking. Like much worse actually. Uh, but I'm like, okay, this is them. But in the second half, they turn around and they actually play good football all the way around and come back and they actually almost win this game. Uh, but the Rams didn't punt till the fourth quarter, and the Colts looked really bad to start. The pass defense is really struggling. The coverage, I should say, is struggling. There's nothing like there's good moments of this team. But there's nothing where it's like, all right, that will take over and win could win them games, can hold them up. There's really nothing about that. But you know, and Richardson did incomplete too many passes. You know, didn't complete enough passes. But I still see some glimpses, some some good things here and there. It's just an upside thing. I can see the upside still. So I'm not really worried about the completion percentage. It wasn't good, but but he did late in the game. He did have a, a beautiful, beautiful back shoulder throw like accuracy but mainly the timing and the decision 
uh, and it was dropped. It was a somewhat of a tougher catch, but uh, I love that like that moment for him. Not just like the placement's good, or the throw in general is good, but and the thinking of throwing that's good, but the timing of it combined with those things, I, you know. So it, you see moments like that where it's like this guy could be something. You know, he could be something. Um, the Jets had a bad start overall. You honestly, maybe some positive takeaways for the Jets uh, for a losing team. Like they got Zach Wilson, got the offense going a little bit. Defense played a great in the second half except the Chiefs held the ball for seven whatever minutes um but the negatives it was an ugly start like the defense did not look good to start like that's the Jets defense so I know they played the Chiefs but you can't start like that but the biggest thing is know your opponent and that kind of go that goes straight to the coaching staff the Jets had opportunities to get more points up on the board and they were settling for field goals they had an early fourth and two while the offense was moving and they're able to get the dink and dunks they're able to get the simple throws uh the Chiefs are playing too far off and you know you the Chiefs they have 17 points and they're rolling an offense at this point. At this point, you know they're going to to beat the Chiefs. You got to score touchdowns. You can't kick field goals. So them to kick that field goal is just mind blowing. Uh, and they did it again too. And they missed the field goal. It's like sometimes playing for like okay with field goals, playing for field goals, settling for field goals, not going for the win, not going for the the points. When your offense is playing the best it's played all year. Better than the Bills game played. Best it's played all year. Like, go get those two extra yards, three extra yards. Um, so I did not like that at all. Uh, you know, I think Salah was a big part of that decision with how much a hack it was. I thought Hackett called a good game. I thought the designs of the plays were good. It was. I, I overall, I'm positive with, with Hackett. You know, I, I just don't like playing, like, almost like scared football, which should not be the Jets' way. It doesn't really normally feel like the Jets' way. Um, or Robert Salah's way, but I, I don't, you know, I question kicking some of those fields, especially the first one. Know your opponent. Know that they can make a play at any time. They're going to get points when they need to. They had an opportunity to win this game, and I know Zach Wilson dropped that snap, and that was bad. It wasn't the best snap, but it's still on him. But I put it. On, I actually put it on the coaching here. And people talk about the penalties at the end. If I'm the official, I don't call. I don't call that what they call on sauce, but I can also see why they called. There was a little bit of, there was contact and a little bit of a tiny grab in there. So it's not one of those where I'm like, I have no idea how, why, how they could call that. And so it's not like a phantom situation, which people are saying, people like to say that when it comes to the Chiefs, just because they're the team that's on top. But uh, if I was the ref, I would be more of, uh, I'd let them play. I call like the tougher ones, the, the more extreme ones. But I do think they were kind of, they did miss a bad hold. So that's where you could argue against it. But I do think they were kind of consistent for the most part, like ticky tacky stuff. There was a hold on the Chiefs, like right before that, where it was like, they no, never called like technically a hold. I can see what they call it, but they never call that. And it was a crucial situation. And they might have been in that situation like, we called that, we know it's ticky-tacky, you know, so we're looking out for ticky-tacky stuff on the other side. So I, they missed a really bad hold. Missed holds happen on every play. Um, so people will go to that. But overall, I thought they were consistently ticky-tacky, which I don't love, but it's not like phantom, rig the game, like relax. It's not, it's not that at all. Uh, but there's actually some positives from the Jets there. They had an opportunity to win the game. I know your opponent. Know your opponent. Like, that's a big thing with the Jets there. But they're listed last for a reason. You know, they were the least negative here. Um, those are – tend I, den, I tend to put those in order um, as well, as you can tell. Uh, but that wraps it up for the recap. Winners and losers, let me know your guys' thoughts. If you think I missed something in the comments, uh, we're always cooking up new video ideas. Think about grades for each team every single week. Wouldn't be able to get to the Monday teams like this video, though. Uh, and then we get into our weekly content the rest of the week. For week five, I'm excited. Learn more about these teams on the year. Join us for all that content. Head over to our channel. You'll not be disappointed with the, with the content there, the videos there. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.